the world is speeding up. We all want more. More money, more followers, more time, more things. And we want it faster. Faster delivery, faster news, faster information. We only live once, so we have to do everything as fast as we can. Right? Well, no. This pursuit of more, faster, has left us in a world full of distractions. And in a world full of distractions, our lives are diminished. We can't focus. And if we can't focus, we can't achieve what we want to achieve, do what we want to do. And in a world like that, one of our first casualties is joy. So why are we so distracted? Well, it turns out that we've accidentally created an almost perfect environment for destroying our focus. But to win the fight against distraction and restore our ability to pay attention, let's back up and find out what the heck that even means. In his book, Stolen Focus, Johan Hari explains that there are a few different layers of focus. The first is the one we usually think of when we think of attention. He calls this spotlight focus. It's the ability to pay attention to something selectively. I am going to read. I am going to edit this video. I am going to make this coffee and not forget about it again. Stuff like that. This type of focus is all about narrowing down your attention. The second layer is starlight focus. This is a wider focus, a more long-term approach to the world. I want to start a company. I want to write a book. I'd like to move to a different country. Longer term goals require longer term focus. If you get thrown off by life, you can look up at the stars and remember where you're supposed to go. That's why he calls it starlight. The third layer is daylight focus. This form of attention is the prerequisite for self-awareness. It allows you to know what you want out of life. How do you know you want to run a business? Why do you want to climb that mountain? What does it mean to be a good person? This type of focus lets you see your environment clearly and figure out who you are, what you want, and what you're going to do to get it. The fourth and final layer is stadium lights. This is our ability to focus on each other. It's how we're able to collaborate and work together on collective goals. This is the type of focus required to build a better world. Focus isn't just an individual issue. It's a societal one. On April 7, 1964, IBM announced the IBM System 360. Along with the computer, they released a paper describing its functions. It was sort of like a user manual. This paper was the first ever published use of the word multitasking. It described a process where the computer would maximize its processing capabilities, which saved time. It works by essentially overlapping tasks. So the word multitasking was originally made for computers not people. But us people, always wanting more, decided to take that term and try to apply it to ourselves. We thought, hey, we should be able to do a bunch of stuff at the same time too. The reality is that there is a significant cost to multitask. The biggest one is called the switch cost effect. This is almost like a tax that we pay in order to switch our focus from one thing to another. A bunch of studies have been done on this effect. One of the ones from the book described a 10 point IQ drop in the average worker when distractions were introduced. Another explained that every time our focus is interrupted, it takes about 23 minutes to get back to the level of focus we were at before. Another price of the switch cost effect is a reduction in creativity. Since creativity is the process of creating connections between ideas, we have to give the brain time to do that. If we're constantly overloading our minds by switching between different tasks, then the brain has less time to make these associations. Which actually brings me to the next cause of our attention deficit, the disruption of mind wandering. This is a crucial part of the human experience. It's where we allow our subconscious mind to take over and explore new ideas and create new creative connections. Now, mind wandering feels a lot like being bored, which to be honest, our society is a little bit allergic to these days, but it's not a bad thing. It's actually a necessary component for a healthy mind. Now, I personally really struggle with this one. I feel like if I'm outside taking a walk or something, I should listen to an audiobook or a podcast and learn while I do it. But apparently this logic is flawed and I've been trying to avoid this sort of thing more and more recently. Not giving my brain time to wander harms my creativity and often leaves me more overwhelmed than I should be. The more time your mind gets to wander, the better you are at organizing your personal goals and being creative and making long-term decisions. An important note is that mind wandering is best experienced in low stress, safe environments. If you're in a high stress or even dangerous environment, mind wandering often leads to things like anxiety. Focus can be thought of on a sort of spectrum. On one side, we have the fragmentation of our attention. 
Fragmentation forces our thoughts to be shallower, angrier, and less useful overall. On the other side, we have flow. Flow makes us feel calm, present, and full of purpose. You've probably heard of flow. It's often thought of as this really hard to reach place where your focus is so intense that you like start to float or something. What you might not know is there's actually a recipe for flow. And it's not even that complicated. Basically, a flow state is the result of having a clearly defined goal that is meaningful to you and is right on the edge of what you're capable of, but not beyond it. Everything you do brings you either closer to fragmentation or flow. It's always a choice. We can choose multitasking and fragmentation of our focus, or we can choose monotasking and flow. Sleep. We all need it, but we're getting less and less of it. And that's bad. Sleep deprivation leads to attentional blinks. It's where your focus fades, initially just for a fraction of a second, like a blink, but over time it grows until you lose your ability to pay attention entirely. You slip into something called local sleep. This is where only a part of your brain falls asleep, not the whole thing, hence the name. This happens all the time. You'll look awake, you'll think you're fully alert and mentally competent, but you're not. This can be really dangerous. Sleep deprivation in adults is pretty easy to identify. We start to feel drowsy, our focus gets fuzzy. We feel the need for rest. Interestingly, kids tend to respond the opposite way. They become hyperactive, energetic. Either way, the impact is the same. We lose our ability to pay attention. All of these factors and components of attention have two different sides, the individual side and the societal side. On the individual side, we have to do everything we can to take control of our attention. So here are a couple things that I like to do to help myself avoid distractions. One is do not disturb. Anytime I'm working, reading, writing, or doing anything that really requires my attention, I put my phone on do not disturb mode and I don't get any notifications at all. This helps me avoid the switch cost effect and helps me stay on task. I also like to work in these little sprints. So I have a timer on my computer that I can set. And so what I'll do is set a time limit, say 30, 45 minutes, and the only thing I'll think about is whatever specific task I'm working on. Before I set the timer, I make sure to have an outline of what needs to get done during that time limit. And it's weird. Usually I end up finishing before the time runs out because doing things that way just gets me so laser focused. Another thing I've been doing recently is not bringing my phone or headphones when I go on a run. This gives my mind plenty of time to wander and explore new ideas, make connections, things like that. And lastly, I try to read every day. Reading has the dual benefits of learning something new, but also practicing focusing for sustained periods of time. On the other hand, we can't blame individuals for systemic problems. Our environment is set up in a way that is chronically impacting our ability to pay attention. Chemicals like pesticides and plasticizers are so present in our everyday lives that it's almost impossible to escape them. The most available food in most places is often the worst option. Technology companies use a business model that only succeeds when our attention fails. So individual Individual solutions help, but they don't entirely fix the issue. In the case of something like social media, a digital detox is not the solution for the same reason that wearing a gas mask for two days a week outside isn't the answer to pollution. All of these factors and more have been found to contribute to the destruction of our attention. And while individual actions matter, the default state of our society has to shift to one that's more conducive with healthy habits. The default option should be a good one. Nikoya, Costa Rica and Okinawa, Japan are some of the happiest and healthiest places on earth. Both have a term that translates roughly to a reason for being. They have a deep sense of purpose in their lives. This allows them to live more fulfilled and present lives, free from distraction. Living with purpose means living on purpose. It's choosing what we care about and cutting out anything that doesn't really matter to us. It's being intentional about avoiding the distractions in our lives and getting clear on what matters. And while some of these distractions are inevitable, having a sense of purpose allows us to stay optimistic and focus on what really matters to us.